And we're back here at Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with Tom Caldwell, chairman of Caldwell Securities Limited. Tom, uh, Canadian home prices, uh, they're down 6% from the February peak. Uh, is this a new phase, a temporary phenomenon? What are your thoughts on that? The answer is I don't know. <laughs> I, do think, I do think real estate does move in a long cycle. Uh, a house in Warren Road, which is premium Forest Hill Street, in 1929, to sell at $250,000. You had the depression, you had the war, and they never got back to that price level until the 60s. So that was a very, very long cycle. Canada has been the beneficiary of a tremendous wave of immigration. Uh, Canada is a destination, and Toronto is a destination within the destination, Vancouver, as well as, of course, Montreal. But in Toronto, you have an everything community. Uh, if you come from Sierra Leone, I'll bet you there's a large Sierra Leonese uh, community in Toronto. So you can come to Canada, you can come to Toronto and still have part of your uh, support mechanism in place. So this is a destination. We've had lots of immigrants coming in and lots of money coming in too, China, et cetera, uh, bidding up home prices. Uh, but there's gotta be a point where it does level off. There's gotta be people like me who still live in their big old houses, and sooner or later, they're going to move us to Happy Trails Manor or something like that. <laughs> and you're going to sell your house to pay the rest of your bills. So there, there, there will be a demographic shift over time. But you're going to have bumps and wobbles. But remember, housing prices really shot up with very, very low interest rates. You could buy a reasonable home and not pay more than you would for a very good apartment uh, just by buying the house. Now, those numbers are changing now because rental costs are now going up significantly. So I think you're going to see housing prices ease off to some degree, but they're not going back to ground zero where they were, say, 20 years, 10 years ago or five years ago. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, turning to another sector just for a second, love to get your point of view on this uh, on this news item. Uh, Air Canada lost uh, three hundred eighty six million dollars in the second quarter. Uh, now, second quarter, some restrictions still in place uh, and so on. Uh, but uh, th what does that mean uh, going forward? We've seen the chaos with Air Canada and at the airports, but are they ready for a big bounce back or is there, is there big problems in the airline sector right now? The airline business is a very, very challenging business. Somebody did a calculation 15 or 20 years ago, adding up all the profits and losses of all the airlines since airlines started. And it showed that nobody <laughs> that there was no net, net gains over oh that gosh. period of time. The problem with air, the airline industry is you've got this very, very expensive inventory of aircraft, and those planes have to be moving all the time. And, you know, they have to be in the air. You have to be flying them. You have to have decent load factors going on. And if you have some strike that goes on, a strike of, say, two or three weeks can ruin the whole profits for a year. So you have all these extraneous and new write-offs that are really big. Uh, and you have, obviously, the covid you have the restrictions of travel. You have the insanity at Pearson Airport. Um, people are avoiding. I have to go to New York, but I'm just doing Zoom calls. I'm not. I'm not getting on an airplane where I got to deal with this arrived Canada idiocy. Uh, I'm not going through the lineups at the airport to to go and come. I, I just. I don't need that stuff. So I do think they're still suffering, but it's a tough business because you used to have militant unions, and if they go on strike, you're going to lose the whole year. And they got big write-offs on all of them. So. I just think it's a tough business. I've made money on the airlines years ago than the takeover CP, et cetera, but I've never come back and I've never regretted it. Oh, that's very interesting. And, and of course, uh, they're, they're suffering from the same uh, problems with retaining personnel and acquiring good personnel as well. So it's, it's, uh, that, that makes it even tougher, right? Absolutely. And fuel prices too. Don't right. forget that. Yeah. No, you know, we're in a lot of fuel and uh, particularly with our prime minister's travel. <laughs> that's right. That's what you, had to get that one you got that. You got that one in. That's pretty good. We got a minute before the next break, but uh, travel sector generally, are you bullish about it? Well, I was looking at Carnival today. You know, I, I I'm at the age where I like to go on cruises because my wife travels very heavy, and once I get that luggage into the room, I'm going for a trip, and I don't have to do anything further. So that it does make sense. But I, I you know, we're, I, I think we're still dealing in a ripple effect for the mm -hmm. time being. There's lots of capacity in the travel industry. Lot, and of course, uh, Uber, or not Uber, but Airbnb has quintupled 
the number of rooms available in any city now. So it's it's a tougher, tougher business. It's it's not one that I'm involved in at the present. Gotcha. We're going to continue our conversation with Tom Caldwell. He's the chairman of Caldwell Securities Limited. Uh, our monthly discussion on uh, what's going on in the economy. We're going to take a brief break. We'll be back after that break. Please stay with us. <laughs> 